Leadership, purpose, service. This is Fulfilling the Dream with Wayman Brett. Your path to greatness is not simply paved with the grinding feet of persistence. Through motivating stories and personal testimonials, gain the insight you need to overcome life's biggest challenges and break through those barriers that hinder you. So when opportunity knocks at your door, you'll be ready. Welcome to Fulfilling the Dream. Well, we're so fortunate to have Milton Barnes with us, with us today. Milton is with uh, Playwright Sports Academy. He's the founder and president of Playwright Sports. He also is head coach at Jackson High School here in Michigan. And I got to know Milt uh, over the last couple of years and found that he has unbelievable wisdom that he can share with people about how to overcome obstacles, very much what we're about at Fulfilling the Dream. And Milt has a career in uh, the NCAA as a head coach as well, and uh, uh, at Eastern Michigan. He also was at Minnesota and uh, grew up in Saginaw. So he'll tell you all about himself, but uh, I understand he also was with the Harlem Globetrotters. (laughs) <laughs> and uh, has mentored yeah. several young kids uh, growing up who became uh, athletes in the, either in the NBA or in, in the NCAA and and uh, just uh, fell in love with the work that he's been doing over in Jackson and Albion College uh, over on the west side of Michigan. Uh, just a wonderful individual. And uh, we're looking forward to our conversation today. So welcome, Milt. Thank you, Wayman. Great to be here and good to see you again. Yes, sir. And so we're going to talk about your dreams and how you've uh, been able to master life and give us some wisdom and insight about what we can do to fulfill our dreams. I know that you have been working on Playwright Sports Academy for some time, and and you've also been a stalwart in the Albion community as well as the Jackson community in West Michigan and and uh, you do a lot of great things, and uh, we have mutual friends and so forth. And uh, I just I just couldn't wait to get on the call today with you because I really admire uh, what you're doing and would love to just get into it with you. So maybe the first question for you today, Milt, uh, just, uh, you know, learning about you and, and uh, what, what I'd like to know, maybe what the people would like to know is... Um, uh, what kind of obstacles you overcame to be successful and what prompted your dreams and what were your dreams when you were a young kid in Saginaw and then, of course, as you grew up and attended Albion College and then beyond that, uh, what were your big dreams and uh, what, were there any misgivings, any doubts about those dreams and perhaps give us some insight about whether or not there are any regrets or reservations about the dreams or goals that you pursuit. Well, Wayman, thanks for having me, but I, you know, I've got to say this. When you say the dreams, you live life and you're fortunate or blessed to have certain experiences in your life. And growing up in Saginaw, I'm, son, I'm, I'm a son of a preacher um, who worked hard. My dad worked hard in the Chevrolet foundry in Saginaw for 30, over 30 some odd years. And growing up as a, as a child, we were taught to do two things, work hard and serve God. And beyond that, everything else is gravy. So my foundation is in those two things. And so as I evolved as a teenager, basketball became prominent in my life. Um, but my dad kept it in perspective. Um, and he wanted me to understand the importance of education, uh, to do more than what he was allowed to do. Um, yeah. and as a result, I was, I'm one of 11 kids and six sisters and four brothers. Uh, and we all were were taught the importance of of working and serving God and and doing what God has you here to do. Uh, yeah. You serve a purpose, 
And as I evolved as a basketball player, I've never dreamed I would become a coach. That was not my dream. My dream yeah. was just to play basketball and, and do the best I can, according to my dad, you know, get good grades. <laughs> so, so that was a prerequisite for me to play basketball. So, uh, I had right. to continue to get good grades and what happens in life as you evolve, God put, puts people in your life. And yeah. my high school coach was Charlie Coles and he introduced the notion and the thought of going to college. And before that, I had no, no interest or desire or even thought about going to college until he introduced it to me. And that was my senior year in high school. Yeah. And as a result, he directed me. Uh, he took me to Albion College. I'll never forget. He took me to Albion College one Friday uh, afternoon during the, during the spring. Um, we came back uh, after spending the day there, uh, got through the weekend. Then on Monday morning, uh, I went by his, his office and he said, oh, by the way, you're going to Albion College. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and that's how I ended up at Albion College. <laughs> uh, uh, wow, life has some f different twists and turns. You never know what's going to happen. And yeah. you you found your way there. And I know that uh, Albion is a is a private school, isn't it? Uh, yeah, it's or a private it's not school. A, not a public school. It's a private school. Small, yeah. small private institution and a great institution, I might add. Uh, liberal Arts College. And um, yeah. it really added on to the, my educational foundation. Uh, and ultimately, I, I'd say this all the time. I'm from Saginaw, but I grew up in Albion. Uh, yeah. As a result of the things I was uh, exposed to and the things that ultimately led me to, to being a coach. Uh, yeah. Those foundations and... And everything was was provided to me during the, during that time in the Albion. Right, right. So fulfilling the dream, our show is about honoring and recognizing those who truly have leadership gifts. And you know, and and I believe that you're one of those individuals. Just observing you and and uh, hearing about uh, what you went through and and the the championship teams that you were involved with and so forth. What a, what advice would you give to an inspiring leader, coach today? And, and what are the attributes that you believe are truly important for them to be successful? You know, I, I tell young people and young coaches to the same thing is, you know, have a passion. You know, have something that you really want to dedicate your life to. Um, right. Right. When I got exposed to coaching, I was just working with, this is long before AAU came around, and I was working with young people in, in the community of Albion. And, yeah. you know, just by volunteering to work with kids, you know, exposed me to what coaching, some of the fundamentals of coaching, and that was making the difference in the lives of young people. And that's been my my foundation from day from from ever since that time i continued yeah. to make that the objective how can i impact young people in a positive way right. and give directions um those kids it's amazing uh some of those kids that i coached that first year that first summer as a volunteer coach uh they're all middle school age kids and it's unbelievable to see some of them today um yeah and they still talk about that time period in their lives, how much it impacted their life. Um, right. So that's the foundation of, of, of my coaching, where it all started. And I was fortunate enough to continue to all of a sudden begin to, to understand the commitment that you have to make as a coach and the sacrifice right. you have to make yeah. as a coach. Um, right. And I, I remember you, reading some... Are... Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I said I was. I was. I remember reading something about Coach Krzyzewski. I think that's just how you pronounce his name. Duke Krzyzewski. University's head coach Krzyzewski. Yeah. That's correct. Thank you for helping me with yeah. that name. It's a <laughs> difficult <laughs> name to pronounce. 
<laughs> those coaches practice but, each uh, other's things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I remember reading something about him about the fact that when kids are given the opportunity to play, they grow their confidence. Mm -hmm. And I remember when I was growing up, the thing at Short Journey School that I believe the teachers there, Mrs. Wall and Mrs. Fuller and Mrs. Cooper, the principal, what they bred in us was this confidence thing. Mm -hmm. And, it, the, you know, we were struggling, you know, sharecroppers when we grew up. And like yeah. you in Saginaw, you know, we didn't have a lot of advantages but the, the thing that, that I caught from those folks were this belief in myself and that as they began to pour that into me, I began to grow my confidence about my ability and then to assume responsibility for the things that I want to achieve in life, whether that go to college and then play sports. So... Tell me your thoughts about that. Is, is that an important element? And then how does that happen? How does a leader, a coach, a teacher, a mom or a dad uh, help yield to grow that confidence in a young person? Because I believe that that's critically important. Like your thoughts on that. Well, it's, it's important when you're working with young people to find their strengths find something this life I just think yeah um, that they're good at and or something that they really like and try to expand on it and mm. make uh, uh, allow those young people to feel good and then show them what it can lead to sometimes kids doesn't really understand the slightest little talent that they have in one area can lead wow. to maybe a fortune um, years later in their life if they just pursue it. You know, I, okay. I tell kids that you can be a good player, but playing basketball is the only option you have. If you want to do something with the game of basketball, then all you have to do is continue to pursue what else can you do besides playing. Yeah. I was fortunate enough. I've been all over the world because of the game of basketball. I didn't know I was going to be with the Harlem Globetrotters. I never knew I was going to go to Africa. I didn't know I was going to go to uh, Japan. I didn't know I was going to be coaching in the Virgin Islands or coaching college basketball or national TV or coaching in the NBA minor league and scouting for an NBA team for 10 years. Who knew all of that was going to come out of yeah. enjoying the game of basketball? Right. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So how do we, so how your do father, we help kids understand? Yeah, so your father Go kind ahead. of given you the platform, the foundation, and then as a result of that, you were inspired to move on and then go to college, and then there were other people. I think you missed, uh, mentioned Mr. Cole and others that were there that uh, kind of inspired you. I had, uh, back in high school, uh, first year freshman at Cleveland High School, there was a president at the time. His name was John F. Kennedy, and, and uh, he was really into fitness, and there was something that he said. He said, you know, ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. I never forgot that, you know, back then. And yeah. it's kind of stuck with me. It's always been this motivation, this drive that, you know, there's something better that can come about due to my actions and my, my efforts and so forth. And he said, only those who dare to fail greatly can ever achieve greatly. And, uh, I believe in, in my heart. If if you know, if I hadn't had the dream of going on to Michigan and and so forth, I don't think what have happened in my life would have ever transpired. And I, I would imagine for you the same thing. You talked about the places you've traveled to and the and the experiences you had, but you had to have something in your heart that motivated you, inspired you to to dream. It. I mean, it, I don't believe things just happen. I think you got to have that premise yeah. that yes, you can. And um, the higher yeah. your dream, I think the chances are then that you will, maybe you don't hit the stars, but you might hit the moon. 
And uh, so yeah. just listening to you, I think that, you know, too often we sell short the mentors that we have in our lives, those that are yeah. coaches, teachers, professors, moms and dads, and what what they can do to generate this this idea, this confidence that you talked about earlier, that we talked about, that gets bred in you. And the next thing you know, you're, you're having an out-of-body experience becoming someone that you never thought you would become. Yeah. You know, it's it's ironic you say you use that quote, shoot for the stars, and you might reach the moon. With writing, I remember an occasion with my dad, and one of those times that he would tell me the important things in life, it may not seem achievable, but you always say, son, if you shoot for the stars, you might just reach the moon, uh, and God will be there to bless you for all the things that you <laughs> accomplish. Yeah, um, it's ironic you use that same quote. I haven't. I don't use it that often because it triggers a lot of memories with my dad yeah. that he and I shared one on one, and I was one of eleven, but there was only two of us that, that at that time that pursued a college education. Um, yeah. And it was important that for him that we accomplished more and had more opportunities than we did. And mm -hmm. and it was, it was, it was real. Um, yeah. But I had mentors along the way. People helped me along the way. There's no question. I didn't know I was a naive kid from Saginaw, didn't have a clue. Uh, so my high school coach, picked up the banner and passed it on to my college coach who Mike Turner yeah. was an outstanding coach um, and a, a close mentor. Uh, little did I realize how, how much our friendship would be going and expand mm -hmm. to where it is today, where uh, he and I talk all the time still. Um, yeah. But it's amazing uh, in all the relationships. But, I, but my exposure to basketball exposed me to so many other things. There's a gentleman mm -hmm. that lived in Grand Rapids who was very influential in my life uh, during those years, uh, those those developmental years I call, uh, referred to uh, named Carl Smith. Um, mm -hmm. He was he was an, an activist uh, and, uh, and and very very influential in Grand Rapids and Saginaw in the black communities. Mm -hmm. Um, and he, he was very outspoken and he and I would, would talk for hours and hours, uh, and we would disagree, but he mm -hmm. was a strong willed and strong minded person who continued to instill in me the understanding uh, of what you can do for your community, uh, and the right. things that you're obligated. It's not a question of. Of, of whether you can or will or anything like that. It's a question of when. You're going to do it. And and yeah. after I finished my coaching career and, and working in the NBA, that's why I came back and created uh, the Playwright Sports Academy uh, because I, I was obligated to get to somewhere, either Albion or Saginaw, and give back all that I had, yeah. all that was given to me. So that's what I've been, my mission since I've been back here is to give as much of myself as I can while I can because I've been blessed. And so my responsibility is to make sure I'm in the position yeah. to help others. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, it's it's incredible. I really admire what you're doing with Playwright Sports, running those programs, those kids, man, that they didn't have that. I saw a photo of you with some of the kids at a Pistons game and uh, read an article about you. And uh, just want to give you kudos, man. Thank you. And uh, you talk a lot about doing the right things. Yep. And, um, you know, um, and I think that a lot of times all we need is just a tap on the shoulder, a little yep. bit of guiding, and, 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 and we will find our way. But yep. the kids need to know where the, where the rails are, you know, where, where the guardrails are. And, and, and they need to be uh, complimented when they find those rails. And, and, and they need to be encouraged. And I, 
you know, I, I think about what's happening in our, in our nation today, and uh, I think we're at a crossroads. I think that um, some kids, not all, are, are, are fulfilling their dreams. Perfect. And, and I, I wonder what your thoughts are about. What do we do to create an environment for all of our youth, for all of our children to fulfill their dreams yeah. versus some? What, what, what do we do? You know, I, I think the, the continue, continuous encouragement um, and, and, and the continuous teaching, you know, a lot of times mm -hmm. we want to just give kids what they want and think that's doing them a favor. And sometimes mm -hmm. you've got to give them some tough love and, and they've got to understand there's a price we pay to accomplish things in life. We have to sacrifice sometimes some of the things we want in order to, to be able to get the things that we need later mm -hmm. on in life. And mm -hmm. that's a tough lesson for our young people sometimes today, but we've mm -hmm. got to do it. And someone has to do it. Um, mm -hmm. And I'm thankful and, and, and fortunate that I get the respect from the kids that I come in contact with, either in Albion or, or Jackson or Battle mm -hmm. Creek even, uh, because people see what I am doing and, and they know I'm real. Uh, mm -hmm. and I'm not doing it just for any accolades or recognition or anything. I'm doing it because it's my responsibility to do it. And people right. respect that. So you've got to right. try and continue to be a, be a shining star for the young people to encourage mm -hmm. them to do what you're doing and to mm -hmm. help them understand they can accomplish great things too. Mm -hmm. And if you encourage them and push them sometimes, uh, mm -hmm. you'd be amazed at the things that they can accomplish. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's a mouthful. I wonder, uh, I just listening to you. So how do you keep it up? I mean, how do you keep your motivation up to do what you're doing? I mean, sometimes <laughs> you start out on these things and life comes at you. You know, there's there are obstacles that come in our life, man. Yeah. So so how do you keep it going? How do you keep that engine going, that positive energy, that, that uh, optimism that what you're doing is making a difference? Tell us how we do that. How does that happen? I learned years ago, uh, as I was going forward as a coach, I also had the experience of working in juvenile lockup institutions. I've uh. worked with kids from might be considered uh, the lowest of lows with very little aspiration or motivation in life to the highest of high, where you talk about NBA players who get paid millions of dollars. So I've yeah. been all over the spectrum. And, you know, the mm. thing that i found consistently, the motivating factor is that I care about you no matter what. Right. No matter who you are, I care about what you do. And I ultimately care about who you become. Whether you're dead broke or you're richest, I don't know, but... Right. You know, it's, it's important to, that they know that you first and foremost care about who they are as an individual. That opens the door for you now to begin to try to influence some yeah. of the decisions that they make. Right. And once right. they have the confidence that you really care about me and not anything external, then they start listening. Hmm. Now you have to hope that they listen to what you say more than maybe what some of the other negative influences in their lives that might be there at the moment, but you've got to continue to give the positive message. You got to continue yeah. to give them the, the, the hope that yeah. they can do more with their lives. Right. Right. And, 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 you know, thinking about a child who is in the cross hairs of, of negative influence, and then you, the, the positive mentor, mentor, and, and, and maybe they have a teacher, maybe they have, you know, others that are out there supporting them, but, um, it takes all of us. I think it's not just the school that has to be involved. And that's why I really appreciate very much what you've been doing with Playwright Sports Academy. 
in that, you know, there's only so much time that a child's going to spend in a seat in a classroom in front yeah. of a teacher. And it's all yeah. ha- hands, heads down a yeah. lot of times, whether it's learning math or science or English or whatever the, the classroom objectives are. And so if they don't have these other outlets, they don't have these other experiential learning opportunities, I think what happens is they lose interest uh-huh. and uh, because kids want to still have fun. And if you can mix yep. that fun in with the learning opportunities, I think then those are proving grounds, opportunities for them to also develop their social skills. Yep. So um, I think that you've actually given us a solution to what I consider to be, uh, it takes a village to raise a child. No question. No question. It takes a village. Uh, just like it took a village to raise me and raise you, because that, that basic foundation is important. Um, we talk about community. Uh, the community is a part of the village, and the community makes up the village, whether it's a, a teacher or a preacher or a uh, just a neighbor, you know, who knows your parents, uh, who knows that you're supposed to be doing the right thing. Um, you know, your, your youth ba- baseball or basketball coach, you know, there's so many different people that come into play, uh, right. that becomes a part of that village. And, and oftentimes we say our, our circle, there's an inner circle that each of us have, the people we confide in, people that we lean to um, sure. when things are tough. And, and understanding uh, those people have your best interest at heart. Yeah. So, and that used to be more common than it is today. So we've just got to try and continue to, to create as many villages as we can. Yeah, yeah. As many villages as we can. Yeah. As many Milton Barnes as we can. <laughs> <laughs> How do we grow some more Milton Bards is what we need to figure out. <laughs> that, that may be difficult to accomplish. We need to replicate Wayman Brits, too. We need to win. Uh, yeah. All right. I hear you. Brits, so I hear you. I hear you. It works both ways. Yeah, I hear you. So tell me, what would you want your family, your children, your your community to say about you? And what would you want people to remember about you, Milt, as, as a person, as a leader? What are the things that you want them to know about you and remember you from? You know, uh, I have this talk with my son, my my youngest son, and occasionally with my older older son. But you know, I, I say my sons, even though I have a daughter, and I share things with her as well. Um, I tell them the importance of what I do. Uh, they are the example of what I'm about. Yeah. Um, all three of them have college degrees, and all three of them uh, are successful in their own right in the things that they're pursuing in their lives. Um, but the w- most important thing that I would want them to remember and to share is that I did all I can to help mm. as many people as I could along the way. Uh, I, 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 I didn't have millions, but I gave as much time as I possibly could to help someone else. And that's what wow. I want them to, to remember and be able to, to pass along as well. Um, because we're only here for so long. And you uh, can't take it with you. And you can't take it with you. So how are you making a difference? Uh, and that's through the young people that you come in contact with and you're able to, to pass it on. Yeah, man, that's, that's wonderful. Well, God bless you for what you're doing. You know, we can't move forward in this country without people like you. We cannot have communities that are whole, that are safe, that are prosperous without people like you. There's no way that we can make that happen. So you, you are a definite asset to, to all of us who come in contact with you. You know, the people in Jackson, the people in Albion, Michigan, those folks that you touch, man, we're, we're grateful for it. And I and I am so happy that you were able to join us today on the show. And uh, we're looking forward to your, your new event, uh, your events that you've been having, the Celebrity Open, which is 
similar to what we do here in Grand Rapids and uh, looking forward to attending that event. And uh, that's in August, too, I think. Uh, yeah. Why don't you talk a little about that and tell us tell well, us more? How we can... Our Celebrity Golf Outing is, is a big event, our biggest fundraiser. We, we have August 18th, um, and we're looking forward to so many uh, former professional athletes or former college athletes who come back uh, and spend time you know, playing golf with it, with everyone in attendance. We we have people like yourself and um, Antoine Jobert, uh, uh, even um, Terry Mills, Grant Long, Willie Burton. These are names of guys that that people might recognize as playing, yeah. you know, on big big time basketball. Uh, Charlie Bell played at Michigan State. Uh, uh, you know, just guys that I've had relationships. Uh, as either their coach or, or I recruited them when they were in high school or, or I coached against them when they were in college. You know, it's just amazing the, the different relationships you're yeah. able to create, uh, even if you're not their, their coach. But uh, you got to know them as competitors, and, and they respect you, and likewise you respect them. And, and those guys come and spend time uh, and just uh. have a good time with, with everyone in attendance and, uh, so it's just a good time for for everyone on August 18th, and be great uh, for all those that that see or hear this podcast. Uh, they can mark on their calendar August 18th and come up and join us. But we'll sh- make sure that uh, we push it out so that uh, they can get that. And we're looking forward to you know your successes in the future and all the great things that you're doing over Thank in you. Jackson and Albion. And so thank you for being on Fulfilling the Dream today. We look forward to opportunities to interact with you more. Milt, have a wonderful day, everybody. We thank you for joining our show today. Thank you. Thanks for listening to Fulfilling the Dream with Wayman Brett, the podcast that gives you courage and confidence to fulfill your dreams. Discover the riveting personal account of Wayman's journey in his book, Fulfilling the Dream, My Path to Leadership and Finding Purpose Through Serving Others, available in print and audiobook. If you haven't done it yet, subscribe to Fulfilling the Dream, wherever you get your podcast. Share this episode with others. If you think you don't know them well enough, do it anyway. Be bold. Make a connection. And if you have a powerful story to tell, let us hear it. To get connected, visit fulfillingthedreampodcast.com.